Dan Orlovsky, how you doing, my friend? I am doing fantastic. What's going on with you guys? Well, we got Loomer Loney in here today. It's not the uh, the back. usual crew. We sent Jones down to uh, the He's morning back. show, and now Lou's <laughs> back in here. Uh, so uh, d- good to get you guys back together talking again. Dan, there was a article in GQ, a, uh, a whole feature on you, <laughs> and I just got to add, like, when, when they called and were like, hey, we don't want to do a feature on you, where you're like, okay, I'm going to be even weirder than usual? No, I mean, when they had notified me or when ESPN PR had brought it to me that they had been reached out to by GQ that wanted to do a story on me, I honestly laughed. I was like, what? Uh, Like me and GQ? Uh, And I was like, are they sure they have the right person? Because I don't necessarily view myself to to fall under that, I guess, profile or whatnot. So um, it went from there. The guy followed me around for the whole day. Uh, I was I felt like myself, um, not not any more weird than I, I guess, uh, on a daily basis am. And so uh, I certainly did not foresee that being a part of my future, no. Is it true that you mostly eat tan foods? That's what it said. That's what your colleague Mina Kime said. Others have said that, that about you, yes. Yeah, I thought that was racist. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, no, I... I <laughs> No, I think, I don't know, like, I'm a very simple person, so do I eat canned food? Like, here's the thing, I really don't eat breakfast. If I do, it's, like, eggs uh, or fruit. Um, I don't eat lunch, but if I do, it's, like, a protein bar or I think sometimes I'll have an acai bowl, and for dinner, I just eat, like, chicken uh, for the most part. So sometimes salads, and my salads are relatively basic, but... I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think that that's all that inaccurate. My coffee is canned for sure. It's hard to believe. No pasta. I mean, I'm an Italian. Like, what, what, no Dude, pasta. I love pasta. Okay, I but would no sauce. Myself in pasta. But sauce. No, is I sauce. love sauce. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. Right, at least you my live. grandmother's maiden name is Montanero. So God I bless you. Like, yeah, I love pasta and chicken parm and meatballs and vodka sauce and whatnot. But I just. <laughs> if I have one bite of it, I'm gonna I'm gonna look like Marcus. So I try to cut it back a little bit. Speaking of uh, Italian food, what's the least amount of money you would accept to do a uh, appearance at your local pizza joint? Least amount of money? Yeah, to, we, we already know what Tommy Cutlets is, is pulling in here. So what? Where? Where does Dan Orlovsky? What's it take to get Dan Orlovsky into my pizza joint? Can I eat the food for free and bring yes, my kids? Absolutely, and wife. Yeah, I don't need any money then. All right. It's a good man. Very good. man of the people. It's a good man. All right. Uh, Dan, yeah. we, we're we sort of playing out the string here with these Patriots. I uh, I would like to hear from you, and really when it comes down to what they should do, I want to hear what you think the plan should be at quarterback, who the new coach should be. GN, say it's mm. up to you. You're Robert Kraft. You're tearing it down, and you're building it back up. Where do you start? Who do you like? Yeah, hypothetically, you're, you're, you've t- torn it down, okay? So I'll live in that world. Yeah. General manager... I think you have to go find a general manager, and I don't know exact, you know, pinpoint names, but you have to go to a, find a general manager to be from a place that has a history of, you know, drafts that have pinpointed guys early in the draft that were, you know, likely to be good football players, and then guys that were mid to later drafts that were, hey, if I get these people with the right coaches, they develop. You, because the, I was just having this conversation. The devoid of talent is just, and everyone knows it. It's just so obvious. So mm-hmm. your general manager has got to be someone that, like, has a comes from a place that has the history of drafting good players. So you're talking Baltimore. You're talking Pittsburgh. Um, you know, obviously the Rams have done a phenomenal job of drafting players. So I think that's starting point. Coach. I, you know, this is a very fascinating coach hire if it comes to that, because it's almost like John Shire at Duke. You're following the greatest ever. Mm-hmm. So it's, you gotta, you gotta hire somebody that can't be a, um, uh, imitator. You gotta find an innovator because you're not going to be able in any remote way, imitate what coach Belichick has accomplished. And so you have to find somebody that has their own thoughts, their own innovations, um, and completely comfortable doing it their own way, they're going to have to have unbelievably thick skin because the expectations aren't going to be any different. So, like, do I, do I sit here and, and love on Ben Johnson from the Detroit Lions? 100%. Do I think that Mike McDonald from the Baltimore Ravens is going to be a really good head coach? I do. Um, I look at 
Gerard Johnson, who's the quarterback coach of the Houston Texans. Maybe you, you, you've, you've got to try to find somebody that maybe is a little bit early, then a little bit late to the game. And quarterback-wise, um, listen, I, I, I don't back off. I still think that Mac Jones is a starting quarterback in the NFL and a good one in the right place. You probably, if you're going to have that second or third pick in the draft, entertain taking whoever doesn't go one, either Drake May or Caleb Williams. Do you think it matters, Dan, when you look at the future of this specific team? Does it matter if your head coach is offensively minded or defensively minded? Not for this team, no. Uh, especially if you do not, uh, if you move on from Mac Jones. If they were going to say, if Mr. Kraft was going to say, hey, I'm, I'm hiring a new coach and general manager, but we're keeping Mac Jones, then I say, yes, you lean into the offensive minded head coach because he'll be in his going into fourth year and. We all know that matters when it comes to the young quarterback and decision-making with fifth-year options and whatnot. Now, if you look at the teams that have been into the Super Bowl over the last five, six, seven years, more often than not, they are led by offensive-minded head coaches. So, you know, there, there is some truth to that, whether that means that's the only way. I, I don't believe that, but I don't think it has to be an offensive-minded head coach, no, unless they keep Mac Jones. So, Danny, you – um. You convinced that Bill won't be the coach next year in this team? Um, I just don't see it likely. Yeah. It, let, let's 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 be honest about the situation and look at it from the two different vantage points. Organizationally, you've been bad or below average, and at best average and bad for the last four seasons. Okay, the <clears throat> max rookie year average football team, you know, average football team. That was the one moment of average. So organizationally, you say four years now that we, we just haven't been a good football team outside of that one year, and, and we've gotten progressively worse. Why? Okay, well, we obviously are devoid of talent. Can they still coach? I think that's fair. Now, I don't know how good the staff is in totality. I'm not around those guys. But organizationally, you can't continue to just think we will keep doing what we've been doing over the past four years, and it will just fix itself. Because not only do you have to be honest about who you are, you got to be honest about who you're going against. Miami ain't going anywhere. Buffalo ain't going anywhere. The Jets are going to be better next year. Now we'll see if they ever become what they should have become. But, you know, so like from that vantage point, changes have to be made in some capacity. So well, then I, in yeah. Coach Belichick's vantage point, if you really want to go chase down Coach Shula's record, can you look at this football team and say this is the team that you're going to get it done with over the next two or three years? So I, I agree with you, and we're talking about the talent. Um, he He's in charge of putting the talent on the field, and I think it has eroded Correct. over the years. So if he does go to another team, I find it hard to believe that he won't have any control on the talent and just, get, just mm -hmm. give up those duties. So with another team, is it more than a PR move, or is it a good move? I mean, when you look at the talent he's brought here. If you're if you're if you're saying the acquiring team, like yeah. in, again living in the hypothetical world, yeah, I yeah. think it's well. There's no question he can still coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they while they've had some really bad games this year, there's also been games that he's at least kept them in it. So I don't think there's any question that he can still coach. Is there always going to be an element of a positive PR move attached to him? A hundred percent. So, and, and that's not necessarily a negative thing. So I think that the thing is with this, again, all this hypothetical, let's say Robert Kraft and Coach Belichick just come to this casual agreement of like, hey, we're going to move on from each other, this and that. Does, does Robert Kraft give him the green light to go wherever he wants? You know, yeah. or is there a, hey, you're not allowed to go anywhere in the AFC East, or you're, you're not allowed right. to go anywhere in the, the AFC, or... You, you, you can't go anywhere with, that has a top five pick. I don't know. You know, something like that, you know, it, it, or is he just going to say, you know what, coach, you did a great job here. Thank you. You, can, you're, you are free to go do whatever you want. Well, don't you think Kraft's trying to get something in return in a trade here? I mean, it seems like that's, uh, that's the main thing. He doesn't want to lose Brady and Belichick for nothing. And if there's somebody out there willing to make a trade, it's not like trading a player, right, Dan? I mean, you got you to gotta have a whole meeting with the other team and talk with the coach and sure. everyone's sort of in on it. It's not, like, it's not like when you trade a player out of town. Yeah, and it's how cordial is that going to be? Right. You know, again, I, you, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to make any type of assumption, but, you know, if, 
if you're Robert Kraft and, and this organization, you know, from the, you know, a hypothetical, again, like the, 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 the Los Angeles Chargers want to give you a first round or two first round picks for coach Belichick. And, and then there's an NFC team, a, a hypothetical, like the Carolina Panthers, they want to give you, you know, one first round pick. Well, w- one first round pick, but he's out of the conference. Two first round picks, but then he's in conference, and you might he might have to he might keep you out of the playoffs or something, or you you know get back to the Super Bowl. I think that how cordial, and it's got to be a place that Coach Belichick's willing willing to go to as well. You know, oh Coach, I can get more for you to go here, but you're not going to go win there. You know, so again, that's that's going to be dependent on how good those guys' relationship is, and at some point, it is business. Yeah, you point that out, and to that point, do you feel? from talking to people around the league, do you get the sense that Bill Belichick is having those conversations maybe apart from the crafts? Um, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't really had any conversations with anyone about it. I, I think like there's this great, uh, most people pay attention to what's being said locally around those parts. And I think there's been some reports of like, Hey, it was done. And then maybe it's not done, done. And, We'll, we'll see and whatnot. I think a lot of people, and I've said this in the past, expect that it can't just go forward as is. Like there has to be some type of change, whether that's general manager role removed or something, or again, maybe he's not the coach there. Um, but I don't think people are going to be floored by if Mr. Kraft says we're going to go in a different direction. And I think people would expect coach Belichick to keep coaching because he's so close to the record and he's still good at it. Whether he's having conversations about that, I haven't, I haven't kind of heard anything about that. All right. We'll leave it right there. Then Dan Orlowski, thanks so much for the time. Enjoy the holidays and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks guys. You as well.